Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Today I will be trying out this new paper. It's called Soho Urban Artist. And I guess it's the same uh, manufacturer as the folks who make Soho Acrylics. And I got this from Jerry's Artorama. Now this is not a paid announcement. I just want to try this paper because it's very reasonably priced and it's a Bristol paper. It's 19 inches by 24 inches and it comes in a pad. Uh, it's 20 sheets and it's a hundred pound. So it's a nice thickness and it's just the right size for my 16 by 20 plate so it's it's a nice i call it beefy it will hold up to uh the the strain of pulling on a gel plate so i'm gonna go ahead try this it's a very nice smooth plate finish so i imagine this is a hot press so the effect is going to be a little different than the cold press papers that I like. So I'm going to give it a try. And today I'm also going to use my reusable stencils, which as you can see are much cleaner than they were. Uh, there's some residue left on some of them, but what I did is I followed several viewers' advice by soaking them in uh, Murphy's, Murphy's oil soap and water. I placed everything in a plastic tub and let it sit for several days. And what happens is the dried up acrylic paint just skins off. And uh, you'll be glad to know that I did not wash the residue down the drain, which I don't think that's such a good thing to do. I gathered everything, placed it in a paper towel and put in the trash so it doesn't go into the water system. So anyway, I have lots to work with, lots of different shapes. And by the way, these are made of plastic dividers, the kind that the uh, school kids use in their uh, reports or their homework. And uh, I got these from a discount store. So these are the plastic dividers. I'm going to put a link in the description box below how I make my own stencils. So I think you should make your own. Uh, you should not depend on someone else's aesthetic. I mean, that's just me. So uh, anyways, I will start by inking this plate. And I'm going to use light colors. This is Titanium Buff by Amsterdam. Naples Yellow, Red. A little bit of Violet here, Ultramarine Violet. And lime green a little bit of magenta so i will start off with these lighter colors for the first layer and then just keep building uh, as i go along so sit tight and let's get rolling
Now instead of a brayer, I will be using my color shaper. So this is quite a colorful first layer. Maybe it's easier to do this without the cap. Okay, sometimes the paint solidifies where the nozzle is, so I have to use a toothpick to kind of loosen this up. Now this is a technique popularized by the German artist Gerard Richter. I'll put a link to his bio. And he uses squeegees, specially made squeegees, when he does these giant paintings. And his work is very distinctive. Okay, and then I will finish up with smaller brayer to fill in the blanks. Especially along the edges which I like to be sharp. Let me just clean up the edges.
just making sure my hands are clean before I handle the paper. So I had to recalibrate my printing registration device because I want to make sure that the distance between the edge and the plate on the left and the right are the same and the top and bottom are more or less the same. Now I always leave a little space on the bottom because that's where I customarily sign my name and number and date. That's also a separate topic which I have shown in a different video. Now I had oiled this plate a few days earlier just to make sure that it doesn't tear the paper. Very cool. And I think it left a very nice ghost. a little tricky trying to spread this out so I can show you. Oh, I can do that later because I want to work on this ghost before it dries. I'm using Lacrylic. This is deep yellow. Here is some Halo Blue. Well, the colors that I like are the ones that are running out. And a little bit of green oxide. Now in this case, when trying to pick up the ghost, I use the, the brayer as a composition tool. I do vertical and horizontal strokes alternately. So they're not haphazard. I am very conscious of trying to keep a good balance 
of horizontal and vertical strokes. Okay. Then I will apply some marks here. The marks kind of break up the monotony. That's just a, a little habit of mine. So every artist has his or their their own um, distinguishing marks. So I encourage you to create your own. One interesting thing about this Bristol, it's so smooth, it doesn't make any noise when I pass my hand over it. I like that. Check this out. Now I will try a little bit darker colors. This is um, the deep green. And this is raw sienna.
this time I will use my basting brush to make some marks. Now since I'm trying to pick up the leftover paint as much as I can, I will take a chance and leave this on a little bit longer, maybe like five minutes. Leaving it on the plate a little longer makes a difference. Reminds me of a painting by Monet, uh, of his garden. Especially when I turn it this way, it almost looks like a lily pond. Now this is totally un unintended, but that's just the way our minds operate. We try to find recognizable objects in abstraction. Cool. Let me see if I can do something with this. This is Naples yellow red. It's kind of like a peach color. Lime green. Magenta. Just a few drops of titanium.
Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let's see how we did. I like that. It's much lighter. And I like the contrast of the left and right side. Try this with some Taylor Blue.
Okay, let's see how we did here. I think we did pretty well. gift that keeps giving. Now when this Bristol is wet it's very floppy so it's hard to uh, hold this up to the camera but this is the result. I like this a lot. It's almost like the plate warms up. The more you use it the better the result. here it's still too good to waste I don't want to uh, stop now use some purple and some cadmium blue green yellow green
Okay, it's been about five minutes. Very cool. Oh, I like this. Uh, especially the right side. Okay, everybody. Here we are at the next segment of this video. Uh, I arranged my reusable stencils and as you can see they're nice and clean and I will apply a second layer of Payne's Gray and just going to place them in the areas in between and this is where having a tube is very handy Now, um, the spaces in between the stencils don't have to be very even. I think it adds to the interest when you have like some kind of texture. And that's why I'm using a very small brayer as opposed to a wide one. where I'm actually trying to create unevenness. And I promised myself I would place these stencils in a tub of water as soon as I'm finished. Otherwise, it would be very hard to clean them. And that's why I was procrastinating. Okay, I think that does it.
So here is the first pull and I want the paints gray to contrast with the very busy and colorful background. I'm pressing really hard. I like that. Makes a difference. It gives a little more structure. more structure and more texture. Okay, so maybe I can use this on this piece. Again, I'm pressing very hard on the paper. Since I don't have a printing press, it's not as it's not as effective, but some of the black did transfer. Okay. So I will resort to something else. So I will rearrange the same stencils, but in different positions. This time I will be using Mars Black. This is a little more fluid. Which means I'll have a little better coverage. This time I'm being a little more thorough with the coverage.
I don't like this. I'm going to clean it up. That's why it's good to have a rag handy. Okay, let's try this again. That's much better. I like that. And I like the very intricate kind of mesh like fabric texture. Now I'll show you the close up when this is dry, it will be easier. let this go to waste. I think this would make an interesting collage material. Texture is way too pretty to waste. That's one of the things about having a ghost print. It's hard to stop because once you get these very beautiful, interesting textures, it's almost a crime not to use them. OK. 
Okay, so what I will do, since this has a lot of extenders in it, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. And put some marks as usual. I really like this um, plate finish of this Bristol. It's very, very smooth and it's very silky. The feel. Okay, let's see how we did. I think we did pretty well. And it does pay off to uh, oil the plate. I love these textures. I think they're very beautiful. Okay, that's a little bonus for me. And now I can clean this. Let's see how this works out.
I like that. I think it's a nice contrast to the green. And copper and green always go together. Now again, I will show you a close-up when this is dry. See if I can reuse these. I will use Soho acrylic bronze. Now this has a lot more pigment so I think it will make a difference. The uh, acrylic is mostly extenders that's why it's a budget type paint but this has a lot more pigment in it meaning the image will be a little more intense it won't be washed out
let me try something. I think this is too way too much paint. So I'm going to offset it on this black tissue. Pretty cool. I'll show this to you later when it's dry. Let's see if I can make use of the leftovers because it's such a waste and I know it's good paint. I mean, it may or may not work, but there's one way to find out.
Let's just to press the stencils down. Okay, let's see how this works out. It did make a difference. It's uh, just enough intensity. It's not too much. And I think the metallic shine makes a big difference. kind of a jewel-like effect. So I will air dry all of these and recap. Okay, everybody, this is my favorite part of this video. I apologize that it is so very long uh, because it's a series of prints and I it didn't make sense to stop. I had to just keep going in order to take full advantage of the ghost prints on the plate. So here is the first pull with two layers. And the first layer, if you remember, was done with a color shaper or a silicone spatula. And then the second layer was done with reusable stencils. And as you can see, it creates these very in intricate patterns, intricate textures which I don't think can be done with a brush. This kind of image is very unique to printmaking. Okay, that is print number one. Here's the second one. And this has a more pronounced texture. It really looks like fabric. Or a woodcut because of the grain. Now, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the 
surface of the paper because the paper is very smooth. And I think because of its smoothness, you see the uh, every little line of the textures. This looks almost like cross hatching in an etching. So that is print number two. Here's the third print with gold. I do like the metallic sheen of this. It's a counterpoint to the busy first layer. And I leave it to the imagination of the viewer to see what he or she wants to see. So that is number three. Here is number four. This one is also metallic, but it's copper. And it's a nice contrast to the deep green. So it looks like verdigris. Like when copper oxidizes from age, it turns green. the next one. This is also metallic. And has a very intricate and complex texture. the last piece and I think the last piece is my favorite because of the color combination and also because of the textures with the metallic gold And lastly, I want to show you a very nice bonus. I offset the excess paint on a black tissue paper, and this is the result. 
it almost looks like fabric and I think this would make a great piece of uh, collage material so instead of offloading the brayer on a piece of paper it would be a good idea to just take a piece of tissue any color tissue that you like and just offset it on the plate to to get rid of the excess paint and then make use of it for collage purposes and there you have it so i hope you like this video i'm sorry that it's really long but what you can do is focus on each print and treat it as an individual piece or you can put it on pause or you could speed it up if you get too impatient i do that sometimes but anyway thank you so much for watching and subscribing and please pay a visit to artwhisper88.com where I have my storefront and these pieces are for sale and all the proceeds go to help keep this channel going and I hope to see you next time